I've always been fascinated with the notion of space and looking at the stars. Looking at them uh, up in the sky, it's not just decoration, in a way it's information eh, moving towards us with the speed of light. That's why I make projects like these, um, inspired by the starry nights eh, of the famous Van Gogh painting, a bicycle path which charges at daytime and glows at night. These are public space projects you can go to which combine a practical agenda and a poetic agenda at the same time. So that was about the stars. But today we talk about space and the space waste which is out there right now. What can we learn from planet Earth eh? if we want to make new things happen in space? What are the problems and what are the potentials? And I'll talk about the future, the coming 50 to 60 years. But before we dive into that, I want to talk, uh, start with the history. I want to start with Kennedy. I want to start in 1962. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Eh? And they were on a mission to go to the moon. And this was euphoria. Eh? We had the Jetsons as uh, cartoons. We built Concorde. There was a real notion of, of moving forward. Weirdly enough, this is 60 years later. This is not an undiscovered Jackson Pollock. This is the current space waste, which is floating around our universe. So this is our precious Earth. And this is all the junk around it, more than 8.1 million kilo of it. It started in 1957, launch of Sputnik Apollo. Pieces of satellites and missiles started to collide, creating this layer of junk around our Earth. So somehow we're not satisfied ruining our planet Earth. Eh? We sort of keep on persuading that mission outside our uh, Earth. This is shocking for somebody like me. Eh? It's almost obscene. And even Kessler, eh, the famous uh, space expert, calculated that if we continue like this, which we will, there will be so much junk around our Earth, it's called the Kessler effect, that basically we're sort of trapped. Everything we launch creates more collisions, uh, more particles, more collisions, etc., etc., etc. So we have so much stuff around it uh, that we cannot launch more new missiles. That will happen in the coming 25 to 30 years. So we will be here in Davos and Dalian in 25 years and saying, okay, good news, we found life outside planet Earth. Bad news, we can't get there. Eh? Okay, that is not the mission and the session I think we should have. So we launched Space Waste Lab, collaboration with ASA, the European Space Agency, because it's a big problem. These particles, although they're very tiny, eh, and you think they're very, very far away, like 2,000, 20,000 kilometers, why should we care? Well, because a very tiny particle, um, if it hits an existing satellite, it's like a bomb. 27,000 kilometers per hour. So it's a threat to our day-to-day -day communication, eh? our satellites, our GPS, our 5G. If we continue like this, no more Facebook, no more worldeconomicforum.org. Eh? So although, you know, that's what I like about it. On one hand, it's very abstract. On the other hand, it's very personal. It's our communication. It's our intimacy. And it's one of the most uh, uh, environmental concerns of our time. So how do we fix a big problem? Okay, very simple, phase one, 
creating awareness, making sure that people know about it. Phase two, fixing the problem with technology, but also phase three, upcycle it, add a new value to it, give a new meaning to it, so we don't make the same mistake again and again. So we started to collect information of 29,000 particles larger than 10 centimeters. And we know exactly where they are, how they are named, and the exact position above our head. And in order to sort of create a larger awareness for people, we started to visualize this with these huge lines of light above your head, showing real time the space waste where it is above you. So thousands of particles like these are floating around our planet Earth. Each one has its own name, its history. It's a big problem, but maybe it's also a bit a big potential. What can we do with it? 8,000 people at the opening of the Space Waste Lab, creating awareness, scanning, thinking, revealing, and inside we did an exhibition about the history and the future of space waste. A lot of people came and were actually interested. And I have it here, this is really cool. We got a real piece of space waste from one of the astronauts from the Hubble telescope in 1990 who was doing maintenance, it sort of drifted away and he captured this. This is priceless. Yeah. And this is very interesting, so we looked at this and realize that there's 8.1 million kilo of space junk. But maybe we can also see it as an ingredient. What would you build with 8.1 million kilo of Lego blocks? Eh? That was sort of the question we asked. Here, you can maybe show it around. Don't drop it, please. <laughs> so we got 2,000 students, high school kids, and experts from ESA and NASA working together and asking, what can we do with it? How can we upcycle it? Many ideas came in. This is in Dutch, collect the space waste and put it into a black hole. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, or here, we need to build a wall from space waste and make the aliens pay for it, make space clean again. Okay. It's not me, it's not me, no comment, okay. But the real, the real solution, most likely, everybody agrees, lays here. Cube satellites, mini satellites, quite affordable you can attach a net to it. So there's a piece of space, Jake, uh, space waste, and pats! There it goes. Hoppa, we have it. Not fully proven yet, but the most feasible as we speak. So we have a satellite, a net, and that is a way to capture it. Then we had a problem. Nobody cared. Nobody likes to clean up. It's like when you are a boy or a girl, eh, and your mother comes and says, clean up your room. You're like, yeah, whatever, mom. I want to have popcorn. I want to watch television. Cleaning up is not fun. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, where the role of design came in. I'm not smarter than ESA or Airbus or NASA. I'm not, because they're really, really smart. But what I can do is, is create a new link, design a new value. So we started to look at that. And for example, question, if we capture it with the net, can we use it to 3D print houses on the moon? Yes, this is already on the agenda of NASA to do this. Why are we shipping very expensive material from the Earth all the way up? Just capture what is there and 3D print it, it's creating a new type of architecture, a new type of geom geometry. Or here, maybe a bit more forward thinking, can we use it to create a reflector, a solar reflector, to reduce uh, global warming when it's needed? Or here, can we create sort of garbage trucks, garbage rovers, eh, which capture the space junk burn it, 
to create plasma fuel for satellites which ran out of battery. But the most realistic one, as far as we know right now, is this one. Once we have the net in a safe and controlled way, and it hits the Earth's atmosphere, what happens then? It, it burns. Yes, very good. So, waste is light. That's interesting. Can we create artificial shooting stars as a replacement for fireworks? And apparently, yes, we can. So this is what we're working on now, right now, to go to countries, for example, the Netherlands is spending 70 million euro on traditional fireworks. It's very polluting, people lose their eyes, whole villages are burned to the ground. We find it very normal. China, a lot of cities in China are already abandoning uh, fireworks eh, because of air pollution. Dubai is spending 8.1 million euros, I think, per year. So basically what we're saying is like, okay, you're already spending the money on fireworks. Let's spend it on this. Eh, you create a new sustainable way of fireworks and at the same time you clean up space. That is sort of the mission we're on with the Space Waste Lab and that is the way I think we should think to take something which is a problem and turn it to a, a potential. It's not necessarily easy and it requires some um, linking thinking eh, between creativity and engineering but I think this is the only way to move forward. We're not going to make it with the existing way of thinking. So ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, that's how I would love to see space. Eh? A space to explore, a space to learn, a space to make mistakes, but also a space where we learn from the mistakes from planet Earth, try to be eh, the best, eh, to try to improve, and try to find a new harmony between economical progress and um, humanity. Thank you so much. Thank you.